It's official. 16 years after soaring close to destruction, Leeds United are a Premier League club once more. But how have they done it? We take a look at their troubled past, the arrival of a certain Marcelo Bielsa, and explore how this sleeping giant of British football can once again rise to the challenge of the Premier League. Welcome to Everything You Need To Know, the series where we give you the story behind some of football's defining moments. In 2007, Leeds United almost ceased to exist. Yet, seven years earlier, they were at the top of their game, appearing in consecutive UEFA Cup and Champions League semi-finals between 1999 and 2001. There was a genuine optimism Leeds were the club who could topple the established elite of the Premier League. The club's then owner, Peter Ridsdale, gambled everything on this belief, borrowing up to £60 million for player purchases and wages against the prospect of consistent European gate receipts. But consecutive league finishes outside the lucrative Champions League spots left his plan in tatters, and despite drastic player sales over the next few seasons, there was little he could do to stop the financial rot, and by 2004, their fate was sealed. Leeds United were relegated. Despite subsequent changes in ownership, failed promotion efforts meant that the club entered administration on the 4th of May 2007. The resulting points penalty sent them crashing down into League One. So just six years after capacity crowds of 39,000 welcomed European giants like AC Milan and Barcelona to Ellen Road, the fan base almost halved. Uninspired by dreary matches against lowly teams like Hereford Town and Stockport County. By 2010, they were back in the championship, where they became nothing more than a mid-table side. However, the three times first division champions maintained the belief they were a top-level club at heart. They just needed the right personnel to realise that dream. The arrival of Massimo Salino as owner in 2013 hinted at the explosive future to come. The colourful Italian held an extraordinary record of firing 36 managers in 22 years while in control of Cagliari, and it wasn't long before he applied the same approach at Leeds. A club once blessed with legendary leaders like Howard Wilkinson and the great Don Revy was plunged into chaos as eight different managers came and went in four years, including an almost comical six-month period in 2014 that saw him chop and change on three different occasions. When fellow Italian Andrea Radrizzani took full control of the club in May 2017, there was promised stability would follow. But even then, managers came and went, and promotion looked no closer. That was until the summer of 2018, when Radrizzani landed on the man who would change everything at Ellen Road, Marcelo Bielsa. Bielsa's illustrious CV boasted names like Athletic Bilbao, Marseille and the national sides of Argentina and Chile, while Guardiola, Pochettino and Simeone all lauded his ability. But the Argentine wasn't always successful. In July 2016, he had quit as Lazio manager just two days into the job, citing failed transfer promises before a disastrous spell as boss of Lille in France saw him suspended by the club's executives after just 19 games in charge. So by the time Bielsa and Leeds' paths crossed, both were licking the wounds of past failures, desperate to restore honour to their name. In many ways, it was the perfect match. Leeds were a club in dire need of direction, and Bielsa a manager who loves to plan. The Argentine is famed for his detailed match preparation, intense use of video analysis and revolutionary tactics. He uses a unique 3-3-1-3 formation that champions possession-based attacking football at a relentless pace. They press high, launch ferocious counter-attacks and flood the wings. The heart of his team pivots around two players, a defensive midfielder who launches the ball forward and a playmaker known in Argentina as an enganche, who rarely defends and is the main creator. Everyone in the back three is expected to be technically perfect, with the ability to pass and play out. It sounds complicated, and that's because it is. Perfecting his system requires hours of rigorous training and repetition many have compared to a military boot camp. 
the project could have collapsed at the end of the 1819 season, when with four games to play, Leeds blew their chance at automatic promotion and were dumped out of the playoffs. However, rather than leave, Bielsa listened to his public adoration and agreed to try again. They weren't going to give up on each other just yet. Now, two years of working together and Leeds are unmistakably Bielsa's. In defence, they may line up in a 4-1-4-1, but once the ball is at their feet, his trademark 3-3-1-3 springs into action. The fullback Stuart Dallas and Luke Ayling plunge forward, while Calvin Phillips drops from midfield to sit in front of the split centre halves. The attacking duo of Helda Costa and Jack Harrison push wide, and Pablo Hernandez assumes creative responsibility in the midfield. They keep the ball high in the opposition third and flood the wings, with just 20% of their play taking place in the middle of the pitch. Their holistic attack has often overwhelmed their championship opposition. No side takes more than their 16.4 shots per game, while they enjoy more possession of the ball than any team in their division. Ten different players have scored three or more times this season, and the fullbacks have 14 goal involvements to their name. What is also remarkable is just how successful Leeds have become at retrieving the ball. For all their possession, only Barnsley and Birmingham make more tackles than them per match, while their attention to detail on the training ground means they rank in the top five for interceptions too. No team has conceded fewer than the Whites this season. Out of the squad, the most promising talent to emerge is 24-year-old Calvin Phillips. He is their key retriever of the ball, leading the team for tackles and interceptions alongside the excellent Ben White. But as the central defensive midfielder and Bielsa's plan, Phillips is also in charge of transitioning the play quickly into the attacking third. As a result, he attempts a massive 9.8 long balls per 90, being accurate with 55% of these, helping Leeds bypass midfield and keep the opposition on the back foot. Bielsa's complex strategy doesn't always work, and their form has fluctuated at times. But this season, their overwhelming attack has helped them grind out victories where it has mattered. They may have lost nine matches, but they have also only drawn nine too, with their incredible fitness levels allowing them to push teams right to the final whistle. Pablo Hernandez's 88th minute winner against Swansea this July is typical of how, under Bielsa, leads just don't go away. Now promotion is confirmed, the 64-year-old can start to plan for the greatest test of all, the Premier League. Sheffield United have shown how an unorthodox approach can reap rewards in the top division, and there is no reason to suggest Marcelo Bielsa's style shouldn't work too. However, his squad will need attention. Patrick Bamford has been Leeds' main threat in front of goal, but a big question mark remains over his top-level ability. He may have scored 16 times this season, but that could have been better. With the second most shots on target for anyone in the championship, he has had plenty of opportunities to score. A goal to shot conversion rate of 0.2 is nothing to get excited about, and neither is his dismal record of one goal in 27 Premier League appearances. Bamford is undeniably an excellent championship forward, but that could be where it ends. In the midfield, Bielsa may need to hunt for a new Enganche. At present, his two primary creators are Jack Harrison and Pablo Hernandez. Pep Guardiola will be delighted to see Manchester City loanee Harrison excelling at Ellen Road, having chalked up six goals and eight assists so far. An excellent dribbler on the ball, Harrison has fully embraced the requirements of a wide man in Bielsa's system. But the problem is he isn't owned by the club. Harrison wants a permanent switch, but at just 23, there will be competition for his services. Pablo Hernandez, meanwhile, is fast approaching his 36th birthday. The former Swansea man may have 15 goal involvements to his name and may be offering a team best 2.4 key passes per 90, but it remains to be seen how well his body will hold up against better opposition. Finally, the club will also be rocked at the loss of Brighton Loney Ben White. The 22-year-old possesses everything Bielsa desires in a centre-half and is their most used player this season thanks to a high pass success of 85%. A known favourite of England manager Gareth Southgate, Liverpool are reportedly eyeing him up. But his future depends on Brighton, with Graham Potter adamant he will be playing at the Amex come August.
If they have any chance of repeating their success, replacing White with a player of similar calibre will be an absolute essential task. But what should be noted is how much Bielsa has improved the squad he inherited. Ailing, Phillips, Cooper, Dallas and Matthias Klitsch have all excelled under his tuition and grown as players. If the Argentine can elevate what was once a standard mid-table squad to the best team in the championship, there is no reason he can't bring them to the level required for the Premier League. It wouldn't be Leeds United if promotion had been an easy ride, but the masterful coaching of Marcelo Bielsa has eventually pulled them through. He has transformed a side struggling to unlock their potential into a winning machine deserving of promotion. Considering the crazy journey Leeds United have been on since they were last in the Premier League, it's fitting the man they call El Loco was the one who finally brought them back. So that's all we have time for for this everything you need to know. If you guys have enjoyed it and you want to check out more, then please click on screen right now for another video. And if you're not already subscribed to the Football Daily YouTube channel, then please smash that subscribe button. And finally, if you've liked the video, then please smash the like button too.